so. I cannot... Uh, I, I'm not going to dismiss my lawsuit just because I know that it's going to cause more of a problem. I'm thinking that when it's in the public light, for a short time, people are going to be abused more frequently. Um, not necessarily by the same agency, but uh, by others who are trying to copy what, they, what they've done. Um, but I think it'll also make people more aware of it and make law enforcement more willing to, to intercede. Um, the Secret Service, when they're abusing people, they get the immediate cooperation of the law enforcement agencies in their area. I mean, it, they have an unprecedented level of cooperation when they flash their badge and, they, and they're, you know, and they've got documents showing that they're part of the presidential protection uh, detail or, or that they are part of protective research or whichever division it is that's doing it. The, the police, they, they do exactly what the Secret Service wants them to do. And they're proud to do it. And so it's a, it's a really awful situation for the victims right now because the Secret Service is supposed to be the most prestigious and the most elite law enforcement agency in the country, if not the world. And they're the the biggest crooks, but it hasn't gone public yet. It, it hasn't become public yet. And so they're still getting the respect and the cooperation that they really don't deserve. And that's why so many of the victims are having absolutely no luck whatsoever with their local law enforcement agencies. Not even the other federal agencies will interfere with a protective division activity. I mean, they're all, I'm not sure how many of your listeners know this, but the U.S. Secret Service Protective Division is mandated by law to be cooperated with by every federal agency in existence. And the other agencies don't have a choice. That, that is actually... Um, there are executive orders and there are other uh, congressional, not really laws, but they're, they're, uh, Congress has the ability to make statements that become policy. And, uh, and that particular policy is backed up by Congress. So it's, it's, it's a hugely uphill fight that we have, but it's one that we really don't have any choice but to fight. No, they don't leave us a choice, because once you're a victim, it's either fight or you probably will die. Uh, you absolutely you will. Absolutely will. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible uh, crime to have to endure. And I know I've moved several times. They will follow you. I don't care if you move out of the country. They will follow you. And they have the ability to follow you. It's not, it's not difficult for them. While you're packing up your house and you're sweating and paying the bills to move, you know, they just hop on another plane or whatever. It's very easy for them to follow you. Exactly. While it's difficult and for you to escape. And most people don't realize that the U.S. Secret Service has absolute authority to commandeer any military personnel or equipment without cost to the agency. And if, if uh, any of your listeners want to look it up, it's called the Presidential Protection Assistance Act. And it's codified in the notes of Title 18, Section 3056, which is the section of the U.S. Code which gives the U.S. Secret Service its authority. But if you look in the notes uh, that follow the statute, it's right in there. And it doesn't cost the agency anything to commandeer a military aircraft, the military pays for the flight crews, the fuel, everything. And, um, and they can load their trucks, they, the trucks that contain the directed energy weapons, onto a military 
transport aircraft, and they can operate that, that truck in flight without any difficulty whatsoever. They actually followed me from North Carolina to Missouri to Oklahoma City, and I was on a private jet. Um, I was on a uh, British Aerospace uh, private jet. It was a 10-seater jet. And I was able to look directly up the center aisle at the radar scope. And while I was in flight, I could see that there was another aircraft on radar. It was very, very close, with easily within half, half to three-quarters of a mile. And I watched the entire flight. And I was being targeted at that point in time, and they were discharging directed energy weapons at me that I could perceive. And I was sitting there watching while the plane was following. I mean, I couldn't see it out the window, but I, I could definitely see it on the radar scope. Well, they do definitely have access to planes and other equipment. Uh, my, my perpetrators are airline pilots right here out of O'Hare Airport, so I know they know how to use this equipment. It's very interesting that you just said that you were being targeted in flight. These people know. They're trained. They know how to use this equipment. So everything you're saying is uh, so very true. And everyone has a different take on it and who their perpetrators are. Some believe they're Satanists and Nazis. Some say CIA. You say Secret Service. And I know who mine are. And uh, I don't think mine are Secret Service. I believe that they're, uh, say, very satanic and uh, Nazi sort of, uh, sort of cult run type of people. But that doesn't but mean they can't, be, they can't be tied in. Because obviously if they're airline pilots, they've been trained to use this equipment. You know, they spent time in the Air Force or whatever. So there's a lot of people out there who've been trained. And if they can follow you from place to place, like you said, it's very easy for them to follow. And they usually always have somebody else at the other end. It's like this widespread mass of people who are connected. Well, in my case, uh, uh, with it being Secret Service, it's, you know, they, they know where people are going because mostly they force them to go there. Um, so when you say that there are people already there, uh, they know you're going to be there. They know you're going to be there. Exactly. They know where you're going to be. Because they put and that suggestion they into your be, mind. Well, they can, they can prepare that location really easily. To Too easily. It. Too easily. It, it's disgusting yeah. to me how easily they, they're getting, they can do this. And you're killing yourself by moving, you're doing this, you're doing that. And it takes a lot more for you to move than it does for them. They're usually already there probably waiting for you. Well, and not only that, but they're used to living out of a suitcase. So, I mean, they don't, it's not like they're putting down roots. They, they already are transient. Very transient. Went. Very transient types of people. Mm -hmm. And they acclimate quickly to moves like that. It, well, it's very... They bring their environment with them. It, with the Secret Service agents, they, they have bunks in the trucks that they can sleep in. So, I mean, it's, they carry everything that they need with them. Well, it certainly is very awful, and the uh, victims are just suffering horribly, and I just hate to uh, hear about it. I hate to hear that people are suffering. I want to do all I can do to help them. It's so sad to hear them suffering the way they are. And some are just on the last, uh, last leg. They have no hope left, and they're like, Gina, I just... I don't think I can make it well, on day. And that's something that the, the feds are really good at trying to take away. It's when, when people don't have any hope left, they surrender. And at that point in time, you know, it's, it's not very long before it's likely that they'll die. They'll, or commit suicide. They'll surrender to suicide. Well, I've had a, co a couple people death. call me, and I'm like, don't do it. You can hang out a little longer. Their life is not worth yours. You will make it through this. We'll all make it together. I just don't want to see anyone die over this. I don't either. Well, so. they, the feds murdered my father. They, they told me that they were going to do it four years before they did it. They told me that he was going to die within four years, and... You know, they killed him exactly the way that they said they, they were going to. 
My father, um, the same thing. He killed one of my best friends.